are live um, with the directors Jeff Consiglio and Kevin Bright, and the man, the legend, and the subject himself, Mr. Doc Severson. Um, thank you all today for uh, joining us at Sound Unseen. And I do want to give a shout out to the University of North Texas, the One O'Clock Lab Band as well. That's featured in the film. I know some of them are watching this Q&A as well. So thank you guys so much. And thank you to uh, The Current and KUTX 98.9 here in Austin, Texas for sponsoring Never Too Late, the Doc Severson story. So, um, so Jeff and Kevin, I think the number one question I have is, how did you guys uh, decide to make a film on this lovely gentleman, Doc Severson? Well, it was uh, just something that the fates wanted. Um, we, we, we just played the parts. Uh, <laughs> I ran into Doc's daughter, Nancy, at a uh, fellow friend's retirement party, and I hadn't seen Nancy in a long time. And uh, I hadn't heard anything about Doc in a long time, actually. And so I asked her, uh, hey, uh, how's your dad doing? And she goes, oh, he's great. He's 90, but he's 90, wow. He's not still playing the trumpet, is he? Oh yeah, he's got gigs coming up. And just immediately 90, plus playing the trumpet, plus Doc Severinsen and what he means to everybody for 30 years on The Tonight Show. I just felt like I gotta at least ask, has anybody made a documentary on Doc? And she said, no. And I said, well, I'd like to. And uh, so that's how it got started. Yeah, that's when the phone rang, said, we're gonna make a film. And we thought it would be a short one, of course, a quick, like all these silly documentary ventures we go on where we think it's gonna be really tiny. And then we ended up going on the road with the guy all across the country for a year and a half, chasing him, literally chasing him because he's got more energy than all of us combined. So that's how it happened. And, and Doc, for you, I mean, what was, uh, you know, were you sort of welcoming? Did you have any reservations with them? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah? What, uh, what were some of them? Well, I, I, I was talking to my daughter, Nancy. She says, hey, Dad, I saw uh, my friend Kevin Bright at a party. And, and uh, he, he said, how's your dad? And uh, I said, oh, he's fine. He's out doing gigs and everything. And then she said, well, call back later. I said, well, he wants to do a um, documentary on you. I laughed. I said, you got to be kidding. And she said, no. No, I think he's serious. So uh, um, I thought about it for maybe five minutes or less and I said, <laughs> I think that sounds like a fun kind of a deal. And it um, it almost feels like that was the missing part of the puzzle in my life, is I was waiting for these two guys to show up <laughs> and, and do just exactly what we did. And I'll tell you, it, it was not a casual experience. Uh, it's one thing to say you're going to do a documentary. And then but, the invasion comes. <laughs> the invasion, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, well, the invasion part was okay. But <laughs> there are things in you that you, you say, no, that's private. We don't, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden, here you are. Oh, it's just two guys, five or ten cameras. And... <laughs> And you, you say, so you yeah. get an honest answer. And uh, all of a sudden you realize, whoa, I'm into this thing all the way up to my neck now. <laughs> and, uh, but with the, the personalities of uh, Gavin and Jeff, along with the, uh, the other crew members, it's one of the nicest, uh, groupings of people that I've ever had in my life. I'd have to say it, it ranks right up there with being on The Tonight Show. Wow, that's yeah. big. That is no, big. I, I'm, I'm serious. And um, 
but before we really started, um, uh, I, I called uh, Johnny's nephew, uh, and um, and he says, "Oh yeah, you must do this. <laughs> Jump on it. Go for it." So when I walked in on the first thing, I I I was well prepared for it, and uh, then when you actually get into it and the questions and the conversations start to go on, all of a sudden you realize, wow, this is just a private little conversation we're having here right now. And then the next thing you know, wow, there's no limit as to what the audience might be, you know, and it's, uh, at this point, I'm, I called Johnny's nephew because he really wanted to make sure that Jeff and I weren't scam artists. And, <laughs> yeah. and who are these people, you know, that want to make a movie about me? And then, well, the oh, you can put it that way if you want, but um, I, I've got a, a way of doing things that if, if I don't know everything I need to know right out front uh, anymore, I, I want to find out as much as I can. And uh, when I called Jeff, he says, um, Johnny I'm, nephew Jeff. Yeah, yeah Jeff, yeah, Jeff Sotsing. He said, uh, uh, forget it. You, you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, he, I said, you want to have a little time to check up on this? And he, and he comes back on the phone in about 20 seconds and he said, go for it. Mm. And uh, so, there you go. For, for me, he turned out to be absolutely right. Thanks. Well, and you know, I think there's so many people that are thrilled that there is now this documentary on your life, Doc. And I'm wondering for Jeff and Kevin, how much research was, um, you know, how much research did you need to do in order to sort of set the tone for the, the doc itself and doc yourself as well, not to say doc over and over, but, um, you know, were you able to provide them with maybe stories or memorabilia or anything that maybe you've never even shared before with anyone mm. in, help, in helping to create this yeah. documentary film? Well, in the film, you saw he shared his high chair. I don't think you shared your high chair with anybody else, Doc. We never well, saw that on The Tonight Show. Yeah, that's a, a big part of my life. And it sits right in our living room. And it's, it's where it should be. Now, if, if you don't behave, Doc, does Kathy send you to the high chair? <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. I'm, I'm glad you're aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. No, but but you know, <clears throat> I, I the thing that worried one of the things that worried me is I thought, wow, I've got a really lovely relationship with Kathy, and and I've been down the aisle. I wore the carpets. I've just gone up and down the <laughs> aisles at weddings, all mine, and, <laughs> and, and I just thought. Wow, um, I don't know if this is what I ought to be doing, and and uh, everybody that I cared about came through big time. Like Kathy, I th I think it was the the most bonding thing that's happened to us. Oh, that's great. That's I great. Mean, I have I have no more secrets. <laughs> We we did get a pretty good pile. Oh yeah, you got one. We'll we'll roll the cameras, Doc. We can always do part two. <laughs> no, we did get a pretty big pile of memorabilia, especially from Nancy and the rest of the the family. We got a lot of really great old stuff, very old material. But um, <clears throat> the big treasure trove was, you know, <clears throat> when when. Um, you're doing the deep dive into a personality like Doc. Um, you really want to get all of that fine uh, 
character minutia that's out there. And so when uh, you do that today, there's only one destination and that's eBay. And when you go on eBay, you know, I literally found, you know, somebody was selling one of Doc's old trumpets on eBay. But uh, the amount of, first of all, his records, you know, from forever, uh, incredible um, uh, publicity photos also came through eBay, uh, some posters, uh, you know, so uh, I found that to be actually a rich uh, place to start things off and to give us a flavor of what it was like to be Doc at the time. You know, telling his story now is one thing, but I think you really need to immerse and realize, you know, as, as I think David Steinberg says in the film, he was one of arguably the three most well-known men in America for 30 years. And uh, so, you know, when it comes to Doc, the deep dive is very important. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's clear in, in the film as well, what's great about it is uh, obviously you went on tour, uh, you got sort of the behind the scenes look of all the fans, all your friends that come to these shows and just to see that you're still performing uh, in the film is really remarkable and incredible. And yes, for many people, they only remember you from The Tonight Show, but you have created so much music over your lifetime. And it's even brought up in the film that you play the trumpet every day. Um, Still do. Yeah. And, you know, obviously it's 2020 and this film, you know, was made you know, a couple years ago, but how, how is it now that we're all in quarantine? And I, I got to ask too, because it is brought up in the film, how, how is your health these days as well? My health? Yes. Um, it's, it's more like this than it used to be. It used to be way up and then on a plateau for a while and then come down. But now it's it's sort of like this and uh I'm, because you don't have your regular gym doc that's the thing that you're missing that's lacking. the thing i miss the most is going to the gym i mean that was a religion to me and uh i've aged about 10 or 15 or 20 years just since this whole pandemic thing started well, we all uh, feel that way, but you don't look at Doc. You don't look well, at you, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I really, I'm, I really notice it, and um, I need, I need to have a good marriage, and uh, Doc. Which I, I have that, and I, I need to have uh, a trumpet handy at all times, and I have that. And uh, if I have those things, my health just seems to take care of itself. I Although know. I will tell you this, <laughs> when I realized that they were shooting me in the hospital uh, and I had pneumonia, and I, I, I wasn't even aware that I had a pneumonia. I just knew I was in the hospital and I, I, I wanted to get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. And uh, boy, it was the first time I went to my heart, I got four or five different guys I go to all the time. And But the heart doctor, I was making a light about the whole thing. And he said, wait a minute, don't you realize that you almost bought the farm? And I knew what that meant. I said, are you kidding me? He says, no, I'm not kidding you one bit. You damn near bought the whole farm. And it wasn't until then I, that I realized at all uh, what, what was going on. You know, was, I'm just glad to be here. It, it, took, that. it took pneumonia to make Doc take his 90s seriously. That's, 
that's basically. Oh, on, <laughs> yeah, but that, that's come and gone. That's right. That's right. I'm, wor I'm working on a, on a project right now with the uh, uh, the uh, the company, the Shires Company, that I've been making trumpets with for many years, and as featured um, in our film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I'm I'm saying this more for Kevin and Jeff, but uh, like it. At night, I'm when everybody else is sleeping. I'm thinking trumpet, trumpet, da, 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 da. and uh, uh, I got some some new ideas for what I thought a trumpet should have as far as the construction, and it has to do with uh, measurements and and uh, well, I'm not going to go into all of that, but uh, yeah. but. It, but the, the important thing, Doc, is for people to know that these trumpets are for sale. That's what the Shire Company wants you to make clear. Is well, are you know, I don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> that's their that's their problem. Oh, okay. My problem is that uh, when when the good Lord taps me on the shoulder and he says, "Hey, Doc, uh, have you ever thought about this particular thing in the trumpet?" And I'm I'm saying, uh, well, maybe yeah. And <laughs> all of a sudden the lights start going on, and and I'm seeing measurements and everything, and I'm I'm working on a whole new thing all of a sudden, wow. and, and and it's just incredible. And um, also, I have a new guy I'm working with that has been with our company for, for years and years, but he's been sitting there all of these years and, and he and I never said anything more than good morning, good night, you know, and, and, and he is really good. And when I walked into his little cubicle there at the factory and I said, I want to tell you about some, some ideas I've had. And, and he looked at me and he says, Let's do it, mm. and uh, and it's it's just incredible, and it's one of the most you know because it it if you're not a trumpet player it's not exciting to you, but you can obviously see that I'm really turned on about this. Well, what's so, exciting to everybody is at 92, you still have passion and enthusiasm and uh, are looking forward and enjoying life to its fullest in spite of a pandemic. So you're just an inspiration to everybody, Doc. I mean, yeah. you know. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, that's one way of putting it, but uh, I'm, I'm still looking for some answers to questions that I've had for years. And uh, the older you get, they still keep coming at you. Mm -hmm. So you better, you know, be ready for it. And, and don't, you can't just say, no, nah, I don't want to hear about that. I'm making trumpets already. They're fine. That's great. But when I woke up in the middle of the night, three or four nights in a row, and I says, whoo, boy, yeah, that's, I think I got it. I, I, <laughs> I see what the, what's going on here. 86 years of playing the trumpet and then he finally figures out something. I can only imagine, I can only imagine there's a visualization of like a little channel or something at a tiny hole that he's imagining. If we move that hole, the rest of us are like, there's a uh, hole in a little you thing. You don't know how like right you are. <laughs> and and that, that hole uh, was four, 459 thousandths wide. <laughs> And uh, I told him, I said, I, I want to make that uh, 5,000 smaller. So it'd be 454 in this place, this place, this place. Then I want to open back up to 459. And, and they said, yeah, we could do that. Hmm. And, and, it, and you know, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. It, it, it actually really really worked and uh, well 
Um, I mean, I, you know, uh, Sound Unseen is a music film festival based in the Twin Cities. And before we got on this chat, um, I believe it was Jeff that commented on your purple tie. And I yeah. do want to ask about your experience with the Minnesota Orchestra and your time when you were in the Twin Cities with them. Well, that goes back, uh, oh, wow. I, I can't tell you how many years uh, that I started playing with that orchestra on occasion. And the reason for that is a guy named Dave Hislop, who was the uh, president of the orchestra for years. But, but when he got out of college, he came and went to work there at, and bam, you know, right, right to the top. And uh, at a time when I could possibly do that, that is to come and be a part of the orchestra, um, he gave me the call and I, ne I never thought 10 seconds about that. I mean, he said, yes, Lord. And um, it's, you know, you have a lot of disparate personalities in an orchestra. Some great, some not so great. But when I stood on the podium every time I did for the 15 years that I was the Pops director, uh, I never questioned that I'd done the right thing. And uh, I had a love affair with that orchestra and I think it came right back at me. Uh, and, and just in case any of you folks out there in, in the Twin Cities are watching, um, I don't think it's a secret anymore that the um, what was the Minneapolis Symphony and then became the Minnesota Orchestra is one of the top three or four orchestras in the world. I'm throwing Berlin in there, London, New York, all, all the whole United States. And to suddenly be asked to, to come and be a part of that family, uh, thanks to Dave Hislop, uh, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And, and, and uh, it, it took me you know, not too long to realize when I was with Jeff and, and Kevin that being with them, was just the right thing at the right time. Hey, Doc, what is it in the water in uh, Minnesota that gets so many good players there? Uh, oh, um, I think it's the bourbon that they add on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I, 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 I can't have that. I'm, you know, I haven't been able to do that for years, but I sure thought I was good at it while I was doing it. Yeah, and that's, it's very well, you know, it looked like you had some great times in your life, Doc, with the Tonight Show, playing shows with uh, the band, touring, and I mean, Kevin and Jeff have really brought and heightened, you know, th th that time in the Doc for sure. And I, I, I want to pass along a comment from someone in the audience that says, uh, uh, this is from Alan Baylock. Uh, we miss you and love you, Doc. Oh, man. There is the guy. There's the guy. Alan yeah. Baylock, yeah. yeah. And he yeah is, hey, Alan. Well, you guys. You, yeah, you, we know. We met him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he's, he's watching. Yep. That's well, awesome. That's good. Um, so, and then, you know, we'll see, hopefully there's a vaccine soon and we can get back to our uh, normal lives, but do you hope to get back and, and play some more shows when things are back up and running, Doc? I, I think for personally, we should write in a petition that, you know, we get Doc one of the early doses once it's sussed out, because we got to get Doc back out there, you know? Yeah. He, 
he's, he's wasting time right now, you know? I, I, I'll do it without the, uh, without the uh, medicine, I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's what it's almost getting to, right, Doc? <laughs> Uh, the hardest thing is is just uh, Kathy is she is relentless. She won't let me go any place, you, you know, because she she didn't have to say. I realized what she was telling me. In effect, was look, you're ninety three years old, and uh, getting that uh, that that COVID thing is not something you want to have happen because. If you do, it's going to be curtains. And uh, when I look at it that way, I, I, I can't understand all they're asking us to do to protect our own safety is, is to pay attention to the things they're telling you and to deal with the mask. Uh, I kind of like the mask. Uh, <laughs> I didn't Severinsen. think about that. We, there should be some signature Doc Severinsen masks. That's what we need. Is some well, yeah, we made some right off. Yeah. Yeah, let's awesome. get the trumpet on, on those masks. There you go. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that, uh, that the film is going to be seen there in, in uh, Minnesota. I have a lot, a lot of really great friends in the orchestra, members of the audience, and uh, a whole lot of other people for that matter. Well, we'll, we'll wrap up this uh, chat with, uh, I guess this is for Kevin and Jeff, and then Doc will let you close it out. But, um, you know, what do you hope uh, audiences take away from the film now that they watched it or they're about you know, to learn that it exists. Kevin? Oh, for me? I thought he was asking Doc. I'm no, sorry. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the title says it all. It, it really is about that it's never too late. Um, the things that we dream of, the, th the ambitions that we have, the passions that we have, it's never too late to continue to pursue them. It's never too late to start them. And mm -hmm. Uh, most importantly, it's never too late to finish them. So uh, I think title says it all. Yeah, that's. I just echo that. I, I what I love is that it's about planting the seeds. You know, there's so many people that are third a quarter of Doc's age, and they feel like, ah, I missed my opportunity to start something young in life. You know, p piano, music, relationships, what you name it. But Doc shows you that it's never too late to plant that seed and start because there are many years ahead, many years as he's shown, many years in which this idea can come to fruition if you just start planting those seeds. And, and I think the other thing, you know, from Doc uh, is, you know, Doc's been a man of service his entire professional life just about. Uh, not only was he successful, but he never stopped giving back. Literally thousands of high school and college uh, workshops and, uh, and concerts and supporting uh, orchestras all over the United States. And he has never said no when somebody has asked. So uh, I, I think that's something all of us should take into our minds right now is that there's no better time to be given back. So. Uh, Let's you know, uh, apropos of what the question was and what you guys are talking about, uh, one of the moments in the film that I, fr frankly, I'd forgotten about it, that it happened, was when we were filming at the uh, factory up in, uh, right out in Hopedale. Um, Shire Factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the blind young fellow came over. Uh, yeah. Jamie. Boy, <laughs> I tell you, I just, I, when I saw it again, uh, it, it, it brought me to my knees. I, I mean, 
it's if just just for that moment i'm glad i did the film and uh it's things like that that give your life real meaning too and if when you see the film you'll know what i'm talking about a young man who's sightless and uh uh it's I think when I saw him and was with him and hugging him and holding him, it's it's like, how lucky can you be? This this could have happened to one of my kids. I got five kids. That it, it could have happened to one of them. And how would I feel? And how would I want him to be treated? And that. The fact that, that we were there and and I had the chance to to work with what what was that boy's name? Jamie. 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 Jamie yeah. Uh, that's one of the nicest things that's happened to me in my adult life. I'll tell you right now. And uh, I would. I would like to do that over and over and over again. And I've, I've kind of got a little idea of why that was. Because when I was a little kid and born and starting to grow up in Arlington, Oregon, small cow town, and my most uh, prevalent uh, playmate was a little boy named Bobby Ferguson. And he, he was sightless. And um, there was always a lot of back and forth about how it happened, why it happened. I didn't care about that. All I knew is uh, when we went off to school the first day, that at that time, first grade. And uh, Bobby and I went off to school together. And, uh, you know, he, he lasted maybe one or two days. And, and then it became absolutely clear to his parents and everybody else that he would have to go to Salem, Oregon to the blind school down there, school for the blind. And uh, um, that stayed with me my whole life. And I think you can tell that it's it's still very big with me. When was the last time you saw Bobby, Doc? I don't, you know, I, 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 I don't remember, but I remember when I used to get so excited when spring was turning into summer and Bobby would be coming up and, and, and be home with his family for a little bit and we'd be right back at it again. Well, if it turns out that he was watching this and gets in contact with you, will you please let me know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of have a hunch that he's probably passed on. But well, maybe, but I, I, I'm going to see if I can find out because uh, to start your life off when you're a five-year-old, a four-year-old kid, and your best playmate is is blind, and nobody's admitting he's blind, they're treating him like he can see everything, and and. Uh, I'll never forget the first day we went off to school together. Uh, there was trouble coming. Those two boys, me and Bobby. <laughs> well, and and just like you and Johnny as well. Um, there you go. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, we got to wrap this up. Uh, quick comment, though. Thank you for sharing your talent and allow allowing us to be part of it all after all these years, Doc. And I just want to thank um, Jeff Consiglio, Kevin Bright, directors of Never Too Late, the Doc Severson story, and the man himself, Mr. Doc Severson. It's been an honor 
and a pleasure uh, talking to all of you today. So thank you all so, so much. And I pass on my, my regards to uh, all the folks out there in the Twin Cities. Hello. Hello. <laughs> all the guys in the orchestra, <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. I can you. hear you screaming back, Doc. I can hear you right here in California. It's all good. All right, and stay healthy, stay safe, everyone, and uh, good luck with the film. Be Thanks, good. Jim. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.